Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming back to the podcast. Today's special guests are personal friends of mine, Mr. Chad Smiley and Patrick Devlin with the Irish Rock and Roll Group and more Blackguards, a Houston favorite. Guys, great to have you back on. Thanks for having us, Richard. Nice yeah. to see you again, young fella. You're yeah. looking well. Hey, you guys too. Good to catch up with you. So, uh, you know, we haven't talked since I guess probably about a year, year and a half ago, and there's a lot happened, you know, year, year and a half ago, we were just kind of starting to crawl out of a little bit of COVID funk. Uh, I think last time I talked to you guys, you know, you're just now starting to be able to perform again. So I know a lot's happened between now and then, but let's get a quick little summary of how life's been for you guys and the band and a little bit about, you know, maybe um, some some recent news that we had about the band and uh, we'll let you guys talk about it as well. So, uh, Patty, kick us off on this. What's what's life been like for you guys in the last maybe year or so? Well, a, it, it, yeah, like you say, it's been a long time and it's, uh, uh, you know, before that, we at least would see you, you know, we'd see you out in different places and you know that that stopped for a while so yes yeah, so it, so now that it's starting to clear uh, it's definitely taking its time getting back uh, we we uh, we were lucky enough to record a record while 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 we were in lockdown so that was good we uh, recorded an album called blackmatic which has uh, been been w- well received but again we have nice people around us so uh, so we 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 will we'll never know if it, if it's bad or not but uh so, so we did the, the record and then after, you know, when things started to reopen again and the clubs that were lucky enough to survive, you know, were very, very tentative about bringing bands back and, and having, the, having the live music scene start up again. So then when it did, the people that were overly cautious or just even cautious still weren't coming out. So that was difficult for people to, to, to make that jump back into, regu- you know, quote unquote, regular life. And then, um, so, so we, we've, we've, since we've spoken to you last, we did sneak out a couple of times during COVID. Uh, we, we are, we are not good prisoners and, uh, you know, if we, <laughs> we, if we are jailed, we will escape. So El Chapo is on base, but, uh, we're, uh, so we recorded the record and then we went to, uh, you know, we, 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 we did, we've done a few tours and we've, uh, we've, um, since we've spoken to you last, we've been lucky enough to, uh, to, uh, join forces with a young lady out of Phoenix. Her name is Heidi Riggs. She's been playing uh, with us on fiddle, uh, doing tremendous work. And um, we, and then just recently, we just got back from another uh, from an East Coast tour, and our drummer walked off the tour. He, or he just walked off when we got home. No, no explanation, no nothing. Just that, that uh, as of today, as of this moment, I'm gone. But we're <laughs> we're, uh, we're 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 auditioning drummers right now as we speak. We're we're in uh, we're in drummer hell or in drummer heaven, however you want to look at it, depending on what you think of drummers. And then uh, you know we're we're we've got a lot of stuff coming up. We we had to cancel our West Coast tour, which was uh, you know a bit of a kick in the stomach for for the you know for the 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 months and months and months that we had been uh, procuring these dates and getting the 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 the, the map, you know situated and get all those because we were going to try to play every single night we're doing a week in vegas and then we were playing in and out of phoenix and um uh, arizona and uh excuse me uh, phoenix uh tucson uh bisbee and then we're going to do some california we're going to do nevada obviously so long story very very short uh we're that's you know so right now we're auditioning drummers at blackguards.com drop your resume and uh we're we're but we're still you know we're we're gonna be at the continental club next month july and uh, we got a couple of really big shows coming up that we are not going to cancel we're gonna have have it have them done by hook or by crook so aren't you sad you asked that question <laughs> <laughs> no i'm actually glad to catch up because like you say i haven't seen you guys in a while and i get uh event invitations and i i, I keep saying yep i'll be there i'll be there and then of course you know things happen uh nice. definitely have to come out and, and catch one and throw the hard shoes on and do a little bit of dancing with you guys again yeah. uh it was we love we love coming out and watching you guys you guys are very supportive of us and we try to be supportive of you uh chad you know you, you talk about you and i were talking a little bit before uh, before the podcast and we've talked just before as friends about mm-hmm. you know the podcast that you guys have which is called Slappercast. it comes out every monday uh, you know whether you're producing a podcast or you guys are planning to produce music i know sometimes you you've produced music in your uh your own residence before i know you of course i know you have access to studios as well but talk about what the production side looked like for blackmatic getting that ready over covid 
Well, we did that. We did that record with Paul Beebe, our good friend Paul. Whom have you met, Paul? I he's, have. Uh, he's uh, a lot of people know him as the bass player for Beatle, which is a uh, uh, Beatles cover band that has been playing at the Continental Club for like twenty years now. Mm. I think they just I think they just passed their twenty year anniversary. But he's he's in the music scene. He's a bit of a man about town. He's plays in a bunch of different bands, and everybody knows him. But he he had a studio called BB Gun Studio right right down the block from Continental Club, and uh, we we're really happy to be able to, <laughs> to work with him there. Not, not just because we knew him and we were just comfortable with him, but that studio was pretty much right down the road from, from my house and Patrick's house and, and the former drummer's house as well. Right. Yeah. That it, it was, it was a good, the timing was weird, obviously, because it was, we started recording it right before the shutdown and we continued it during the shutdown, but it was, um, it was kind of a fortunate thing that we had gotten, gotten it rolling when we did, because it did kind of give us something to a little bit, something to focus on you know, in the absence of everything else. Have you, Chad, have you seen, I guess the scene, the, the live music scene come back the way it was? Is it, is it back yet? Or is it still sort of teetering and tottering, you know, not it quite seemed, there yet? seems like it's doing pretty good now. I, I've, I know we lost a couple places, but surprisingly, I mean, I'm, I'm really pleased to see how many places hung on um, by some kind of miracle. I mean, like, the big easy, which is right, right down the street from me. Mm-hmm. I was really worried about that place for a while, but they're, they're still here. <laughs> right. They shut down twice actually because of yeah. COVID concerns. Yeah. Um, it seems like it's doing well. I, I, I would be interested to hear other people's opinions, but it's been a, definitely a slow, uh, a slow progress to get back to normal. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But yeah. I, I, I would disagree wholeheartedly with that statement. I think that it's, I think that it's not even a fraction of what it was. Um, the just just the club owners that I've spoken to and the you know and booking these tours, uh, w- w- it's just nobody nobody has any faith in it and and the bands that are playing out right now seem to be there's a lot of more a lot more backbiting than there was beforehand in hmm. bands trying to you know to 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 get hold of calendars and whatnot because there's just fewer places to play and I I say I say to live music fans all the time I say look you can't sit this one out you know if if you if you really are a fan you've got to go out make it happen because the, the the bands are falling apart the clubs are definitely falling you know they're held together by a shoestring you go just go to any of your clubs and try to see if you if, if any of the same staff are working they're all new it's all new faces in there it's it's a and it's a, it's a, I, I think it's a, I think the, I think the, the, the industry is in peril. I really do. Hmm. Well, that's interesting because I, I know some of my Irish dance friends who produce their own gigs and shows, they will, they will book a small regional theater tour and these could be 400 seaters to thousand seat th- type theater. And they'll, they're telling me that, you know, one night we've got 30 in the, in the audience and the next night we've got 500 depending on where you go and depending on the night and everything, are you, are you guys seeing that much of a swing or is it pretty steady? Even if it's smaller, is it steady or is it swinging like that? It, it, it's it, our, our experience on the tours and the trajectory trajectory has definitely been upward. However, the, um, uh, so for instance, we did a festival in Maryland uh, just a few weeks back and the turnout <laughs> one right now is extremely hot. It was extremely hot, and poor planning had the face, had the sun facing the the stage, and the stage facing the sun. And I think for the show, they moved the sun very, very close to the stage because it felt like it was eight hundred degrees on the stage. <laughs> but so, so, so the, the 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 attendance in in past years. Now, keep in mind too, the last time we were there was three years ago because they 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 were they, they were gone for two. So when they came back, they, so again, the, the, it was really a fraction of the, of, of the turnout that we had seen in past in, you know, in, you know, days gone by. But then again, some of the other clubs that we had played were, you know, decent attend. And it it wasn't that some places, you know, like the, 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 we, we, we've played in the towns where they've said that COVID is a farce and, you know, fake and all that stuff. And we played in those towns. The the attendance wasn't great there either. So So you know, there's there, there's no there's no uh, rhyme no reason for the success yeah. or the failure of of. Right. Uh, of it's, hmm. it's funny I mean, along those lines too. There was not this tour, but the Midwest tour we did earlier this year. We played at the Castle Theater in Bloomington, where they take COVID very seriously. There, oh, and the turnout there was actually surprisingly good. Uh, yeah. For the, I mean, not just the times, but that location. So hmm. you really don't know what to expect. Right. But, um, 
and, and, and they, they, yeah, they had the headliner. The, the 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 headliner on the Friday night before we had played had drawn like seven people. So we were just we were just like, oh, this because we were doing a midweek show. They they were kind enough to give us a a, a, a a pickup show, you know, like during the week. So, but we still had a we still had a, so we were terrified going in, thinking, uh oh, if you know, big name didn't have anything on a Friday, we're definitely not going to have it. But we did. We had you know we had a lot more people through the door than we thought than they thought. So, yeah. uh, definitely a success on that. And of course, that's that's going back quite a few months. Yeah. So, right. hmm. yeah. Was there a time, uh, Chad, during this? you know, during, I guess the last couple of years where, you know, maybe things weren't looking all that great. I mean, because for a while we didn't know when anything was going to open back up. Uh, was there a time where you start thinking, gee guys, you know, we're not bringing any money. And I mean, you know, just like any oh, yeah. live, live musician or dancer or gig or whatever you, you live off what you make, butts in yeah. seats. Is there a time that you go, you know, you know, Patty, I think we need to go bag groceries for a couple of weeks, you know, to bring, to bring that money in or, or how do you prepare? I mean, surely you guys prepare for, you know, have contingencies for when times are slow. How did you, how do you weather those, those slow times? Uh, <laughs> it was, it was really, I mean, the first, I want to say like the first three or four months of after the shutdown, it was really terrifying because we, yeah, nobody really know how long I remember. I remember early on, even before things were shut down, um, Patrick was talking to me about something. He, he was talking to a club owner, friend of ours who mentioned that they had heard that they were going to shut the bars down until August, you know, mm. 2020. Mm -hmm. And that was just like jaw dropping. Like just, just the thought of that alone was like, the world's ending, you know, <laughs> the apocalypse, <laughs> not only did they not, not only you know, August came and went, and then, you know, the entire year came and went and then 2021 came and went. And yeah, it, it was, there were a lot of times where it felt like, well, I don't know what's going on there. I, I never really got to the point where I felt like, okay, I'm just going to pack it in and not do music anymore. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, it had never really came to that point. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I have, I have, I have, another source of income that I, that I lean on sometimes for doing web design. So that definitely has come in handy, but it's not, right. it really is music is the, by far the biggest fraction of my income still. Right. So it's been tough. The, there was, you know, the, the, uh, the cares act, whatever it's called that they passed right. uh, to assist people like us. There's no question mm -hmm. about that. There's a lot of other musicians and club owners as will attest to. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I never got to the point where I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm done. I'm, I'm still, as, as, as weird as things have been, I'm still pretty optimistic that we're going to be able to make it work long term. Right. Patty, you know, you've been in this business for a long time and uh, it doesn't matter what creative art you belong to. You're going to know people that's done something and they were just diehards for years and years and years. And all of a sudden you hear they're no longer doing it anymore. What what do you attribute to your stay in power? What keeps you in the game, as it were, and wanting to come out night after night and do this and all the stuff that takes to make this happen behind the scenes, the practice, the booking gigs and all that kind of stuff? Um, well, to, to be honest, I can't do anything else. <laughs> so it, it, it's a necessity. I really uh, walking and talking at the same time is difficult for me. I Honestly, I mean, the 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 name your own schedule thing really appealed to me. I, I used to bartend before I started playing music and it was actually because of my bartending that I said, you know what, the, 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 the world doesn't need another bartender. The world needs performers. And only because working in the bars, I would see these bands come through and just, they were, it was like they were relaying a message, a, 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 a poorly delivered message most of the time. So they, they, they cover a song and they try to be just like that song or if if something in the band would would stop them from sounding too much then they would do a little twist on but nothing was nothing was sold to you everything was just passed along nothing was you know and i said you know so i i think i could do a better job performing because if i was playing music i wouldn't do this this and i would do this and this and then working behind the bar too you have to understand Yes, yes, your band is worth $10 million per hour or whatever you're going to charge. Yes, it's worth every cent. But, you you know, if the bar doesn't sell, you know, $100 worth of beer, you know, when you're playing, you can be worth as much as you want. You know, if you don't bring anybody and you don't deliver to the club, you know, the, the, the club's got bills long before and long after you, you, you know, you come and go. So, right. So 
you know, so, so I, I love the nightlife. I love, uh, I love live music. I love, I love original music. So this, the, all, all, all aspects of that draw me to it. And, and I, and I have obscene amounts of energy. I, I've just today, I was, I was laughing because I was, I went out and I was driving around and got, got some things done. It said 112 on the, on the, on the uh, thermometer. I said, now's the time so i go and do a five mile run <laughs> oh my gosh you're <laughs> and I, crazy <laughs> and I, yeah and, and i just you, you know it's I, 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 you know you'd think by now i'd be sitting on it you know well, i'm sitting but you think i'd be lying down so i'm still as energized as i was before i ran and right. it's the goofiest time of the day to go running it's the goofiest but i have all this energy and i just and i love to perform you know and then again you know having people like chad in, in, in the band and heidi you know people that that not just like the music they see, you know, I, I, I'm not serious a lot of the time. So they'll see a lot of the, the humor in it and they'll be able to, to either laugh at it or step over it or ignore it, whatever they, however they have to deal with it, they'll <laughs> deal with it. And they, but they, they, they still show up. They're still on time. There's still a pleasure to be around Chad. I've known for 18 years and I've only pulled a gun on him once. <laughs> and, 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 and it was, and, and it was a water pistol full of soap because he forgot to shower. But no, seriously, there, there's no, there's no, uh, uh, you know, there, there's, 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 there's uh, to, to me, there's always a shortage of great, uh, you know, great performances. I think there's always a, uh, there's always a call for that, but there's, mm. you know, there's, there's a hundred bands that can play what's, what's on the radio right now for you very, very well to mediocre to terrible, you know? So I, I, I just think if, if you have a, a good original idea and you can push that, you know, and it really does, it, 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 it energizes you to, to, to do it time and time right. again. Right. Very good. Chad, I was watching the podcast this last week, and and as we mentioned very quickly earlier, you know, you guys recently lost a, a drummer, and that's that's key to a band like yours. I mean, you you know, mm -hmm. you need that that backbeat there, as as most bands do. What what goes through your head when you get that message from whether it's this former drummer or maybe you know musician? I know there's been musicians that's come and gone, like in any band over the years. What goes through your head when you get the message that uh, you know, hey guys, it's been fun, but you know, adios, I've got to, I've got to go. A lot of words I can't say on the show. <laughs> oh, it's here we go again. You know, it, and uh, it's actually been a long time since we've had to, to wrestle with a drummer situation uh, since, you know, Mike, right. Who, who predated the, our drummer who just left was with us for a very long time. Uh, he was, he was, he was uh, our rock for a very long time that we yes. knew we could always count on him. And we felt lucky that, the, his successor was ready to go when he did tell us that he needed to leave. So now we're kind of going through what we probably should have gone through <laughs> two and a half years ago when, when Mike told us he quit. So um, no, it, it's never fun when somebody leaves, especially when you spend a lot of time getting them into the band and doing, you know, re reworking all the arrangements, getting them, having, having them learn the songs and it's not just a matter of learning the music too. It's, it's really uh, kind of developing a language with that person. You, they have to learn the songs and really in a sense, we kind of have to relearn them too, to kind mm -hmm. of, to, to kind of blend in with this new thing. You know, every time you change a member of a band, it's like it change everything changes in a sense and, and mm -hmm. uh, it becomes something new, which right. is at, at once exciting, but also nerve wracking, you know, mm -hmm. it can be exhilarating and, you know, scary at the same time. Right. But right. something better will always come out of it in the long run. And sure. uh, so it's at this point, we're kind of in this point right now, let's just list limbo before the next phase. So it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of like, what's going to happen. You know, I'm totally optimistic. We're going to make it work because we've been through, it's not our first rodeo, shall we say. Yeah. And Chad, just continuing on here in this vein, you know, there's, there's people that maybe watching this that, it could be in some creative endeavor and maybe they're going through the same thing, or maybe they're looking to form a group for the first time, whether it's a mm -hmm. dance group or a music group. What, what are uh, some of the things that you would maybe tell them things to, to let's just assume this is someone is just getting started. They got some friends they want to get together as a lot of bands start with friends or in my case, dancing gigs. You've, you've been, you've known these people for a while. You maybe performed a, practice a little bit for a while, but then you start forming a group. And then if you're going to go and tour and get paid, you've not just formed a group of friends, you formed a business. 
Mm-hmm. Talk about some of the, the the considerations that you've learned over the years that they need to think about. Uh, I would first tell them, hang on tight. because it's, Hang it's, on tight. Yeah. It's the, it's a bumpy road. I mean, I think it's probably true with any small business, but when, when you're, when you're doing this, I mean, you're, you're not just trying to make ends meet. You're, you're on the road, you're weathering all kinds of stuff coming at you, all kinds of different people, different <laughs> weather situations, you know, um, trying to make sure your gear doesn't get stolen. Um, keeping an eye on your bandmates, making sure you've made the right decisions with your bandmates, you know, are, are they, you know, are they using drugs? Are they selling drugs? Are they, <laughs> right. are they putting you at risk? You know, um, not that, that that's nothing that's happened with us recently, but you know, it really has a lot of it has to do with picking the right people. And I, I, that is the biggest challenge in the wrong one and in, in the long run. And uh, th- that obviously is what has helped made this last is that Patrick and I have been on the same page since day one. And, uh, you know, when we, when we first met, we both realized, wow, you're as crazy as I am <laughs> about <laughs> wanting to do this no matter what. Cause I, it's, it's not easy to find people because a lot of people will talk that talk, but when it comes down to actually doing it, they're like, ah, I gotta go. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they just can't handle it or they'll, they'll have a meltdown because they're realizing they can't handle it and they don't want to admit it. You know, there's, there's all kinds of different ways that it can, un- mm-hmm. it can unravel. Right. Uh, we, we, we've seen it all in this mm-hmm. time. So, right. Yeah. Yeah, Patty. Uh, when you're when you finally do get this core group together, you know, with you when you're going in the same vein we just started with with Chad, you you've got people out there that may be you know forming this group for the first time. Somebody's got to be the boss. Somebody's got to be the the worker ant, you know. And you play obvious. I ideally you're going to play off people's strengths as you get to know them. Hey, you're good at marketing. I hate marketing. You're good at guitar. You know, there's all these things that people don't consider. What I want to know from you, Patty, is uh, how how do you set up the hierarchy and how do you try to make that hierarchy work? Because there's a hierarchy and everything or it's going to fail. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Um, And a a lot of the times, a lot of the times the hierarchy kind of just falls into place. And that sounds silly. But um, when we started out, was there was four of us at the beginning, and, and uh, Brian Vogel was our drummer, and Tori Hoyseth was our fiddle player, Chad Smalley was the bass player, and I was the singer. Now I put the thing together, and I, uh, I was really the only one that had worked in bars, um, so, so I'm going to talk to the bar owners, and I, I have that, you know, so that that kind of fall, and also in starting the band too, and it, it definitely was my vision that to do this kind of rock thing you know chad like had heard of bands like thin lizzie and stuff like that but not as in depth as when you know i said this is kind of where we're going to start this what yeah and and chad was um chad is such a connoisseur of music that he had, he you you really only have to point him in that direction then he goes off and scurries in and learns what he needs to you know you know finds finds his favorite stuff and tori was tori is just one of these monster fiddle players that if you, if you're thinking that tune, if you're, if you're in any way in tune with her, she's going to find it. So that we had, we had, uh, it was kind of easy for us because uh, I had asked Chad to join. Then Chad and I had asked Brian and Turi to join and then you know, on and on and on. So, so it, it and, and we've never really thought of it as a, as a, and I will say this too, that, you know, a, a, a democracy won't work in 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 a situation like this you know because if you have if you have uh, you know if you have four votes all going in different directions you know you're it's right. you know you're not going anywhere and um so you know essentially you, you want that you, you you know you want you want to follow that vision but if that vision turns to something that's completely you know just just polar opposite to what to where you started you know, you're, you're kind of, you, you will be spinning and, and it just, you know, and, and, and I've seen a lot of really great bands try to take that turn because they're following a whim and then they end up and, and, and the, the punters can sense that we've, we've brought people in bef- that have played with us before in different instruments all throughout uh, the, the, the history of the band. And if you don't bring the right people in, you, you'll turn people away. And it was funny on the departure of this last drummer, we have had more phone calls. It was shocking to myself and Chad. We were kind of like, "Oh!" And the amount of people that said, "Yeah, he wasn't a good fit." So, so you, <laughs> you may think that you've got it down and you've got it, you know, but your job is, as as you know, you know, as uh, as you know, Richard, you know, if if you don't, 
if you can't bring them to you and you can't sell your product, I mean, you may as well, you know, just go dig a ditch or something, you know, there's no, no, that's true. That's true. In the few minutes that we've got left, uh, I got a couple more questions for you guys. So, uh, Patty, I'm going to continue on with you in this same vein, what we we're just talking about. So when you get someone, well, you lose someone first and you get, a, like you say, you start getting contacts as, as, as you would. Hey, are you okay? Hey, what happened? Hey, can I audition? I know you're looking for someone. What exactly are you looking for? Actually, more importantly than that, what exactly are you and Chad, the band and your, your fiddle player? I'm sure she gets input. Simply, what are yeah. you guys looking for? Yeah, well, yeah, first and foremost, so, so we're, you know, Irish rock band, you think, okay, pubs and clubs and what whatnot. We, uh, I, I don't drink, believe it or not. And uh, I've been drug free and alcohol free for so many years. I can't, I don't even care to count. And Chad doesn't drink a lot as long as it's not nighttime or daytime. Every other time he's hammered. <laughs> but, uh, so, so, so you, you, you have to keep a check on that too. I mean, if you're a band that loves to drink and fight and do your thing, then do, then all do that, but don't half do that and half not because you're, you're going nowhere. So, we're we're really lucky. We got responsible people, you know, it, you know, in, in in the fold, and uh, and when you have one person that doesn't fit that, they, you know, they can rattle the whole thing loose. Which was, you know, a testament to this band is because we've had them in here, we've had them in all different shapes and sizes, and you know, try to just infiltrate and 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 ruin that foundation, and it's it's just it's 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 immovable. We just, you know, we've been doing it long enough and we, we, we know the direction, we know the success and we know what, what, what to do and what not to. So, um, it's very easy to, it, it, it's very easy to say, well, don't do drugs, kids and don't, you know, this, but it, it just, it, it, you're, you're the longevity of your, of your, um, of, of your band and your craft is, is, uh, is paramount. You know, so so you want to do everything you can to stay healthy, to stay drug free, and you know, and 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 then bring the same message. Have everybody selling the same message. You know, giving the same energy. You know, right? It's because because so what we're looking for, we're looking for. You know, you you, you got to know it's tongue in cheek. We got a lot of stuff that's got a lot of music. I think that's pretty serious, but there's a lot of tongue in cheek kind of. Uh, lighthearted fun and 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 i appreciate you mentioning mentioning our uh, our podcast slappercast which is a weekly uh po- podcast but i i beg you it's not for kids it's not for kids yeah, it's we, not we, for kids we, we, yeah, yeah. We, we and it's it, it, it's never it's never vulgar it's just you know it's just bad language but still right. kids no so uh yeah but uh but we started out like we started out the first episode, you know, kind of, and it was another one of those pandemic things. We got, so do we, uh, do we do the, you know, that within, within, within minutes, there was just sparks flying. It was just, all right, <laughs> there it is. That's it. And that's the same thing in the band. You have to know, you know, so we're looking for, we're looking for a, a, a well-versed player. You got to be a well-versed player. You got to have a good sense of humor and you got to have a great work ethic. There's nothing worse than that person signing. And I'll tell you how a lot of these, uh, these uh, um, emails and you know these introductions go. It's like, hey man, uh, I looked at your schedule. Looks great. Uh, uh, when, when do I start? Mm-hmm. We're like, uh, well, let's. Uh, w- what about a, a audition or a rehearsal, whatever you want to call it? Yeah. What about next Wednesday? And then radio silence. Nothing. Really? Yeah. And 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 I'm and I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, I said, what product do you are, are you trying to say if, if you're not even willing you're willing to go to a gig and you're not willing to go to a rehearsal what are you selling and i i don't ever want to buy it i don't want to hear it i don't want to know about it yeah so yeah we know there's a lot of egos amongst us creatives sometimes you know it's hard to eat that humble pie uh so i guess lastly chad if you can i mean you've got as i said we've mentioned the podcast you've got a new album you've got uh i know you guys are gonna be back on the road before too long i know you're gonna find a great fit uh, for the band with the drummer, uh, if you will. And the, and the last question I have for you is, is where can people find out all this information about you guys? Blackguards.com Black, is all there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, but if you go to any of our social media, I mean, particularly Instagram, Twitter, uh, there'll be a link in the bio, which will send you to uh, our little link tree thing, which has everything there that you might want to know. Like links to our podcast, links to our mailing list, uh, website, um, videos and all that kind of stuff. So. Good merchandise. 
Good. Yeah, and our, and our, our web, thank you. <laughs> I need a new thank shirt, you. by the way. <laughs> I keep forget our web store. Yeah, we do have a lot of stuff for sale on our store right now, including yeah. our our LP. The Blackmatic LP is for sale right now. Yeah, it's vinyl. Awesome. Vinyl. That's right. Awesome. And uh, the work, the official Blackmatic work shirts are on sale as well. We Very sell plenty good. of those. Yeah. Awesome. Well, guys, thanks for coming back on and updating and, uh, you know, talking about some of those those life lessons and experiences that have helped you guys, as you say, you know, stay together for so long. Uh, all the best to you guys. I know you're going to get you a good fit there and can't wait to see you guys back on the road soon. Richard, thanks, thank Richard. you so much. And, and, and best of luck to you as well. Really appreciate you uh, doing this. Sure. No problem. Take care, guys. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Cheers. Yep.